bless each and every one of you this morning for today is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Today is the 8th of September. Amen. And it's time for Sunday school. And we want to thank God for even the ones that are on the line. Amen. That are calling in and checking. Amen. And we're going to rejoice in the word today. Amen. My name is Elder Patrick Belton, amen, and I'm a friend, I'm a co-brother, I'm someone that visited Imani's church. I thank God for this church, amen, amen. It's a wonderful church in, right here in Temecula, California, amen. The pastor, amen, is um, Superintendent um, um, Mason, amen, and he's a wonderful man, him and his wife, amen. We thank God for the superintendent here, um, Elder, amen. Um, Brian, amen. amen. Today, uh, the Bible subject is, amen, is old and new. Amen. amen. I, mean, I like that. Old and new. To set us in line, amen, how we should be acting. We are coming from Romans chapter 7, amen, and that will be from uh, verse 1 down to verse 12. Just be excited, amen, and open your hearts, your minds, amen, to receive the Word of God. And you at home, amen, I pray that you open your Bible also and follow with us, amen. For God is good and He's worthy of praise, amen. God is good, amen. I'm going to read uh, uh, Romans chapter 7 and verse 1 down to 7, and we, I mean 12, and we're going to look at verse 6 a little bit closer, amen. And please pay attention to the Word of God, for we have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit says unto the church, amen. amen. And as we know, Jesus walks in the midst of the church. How exciting is that, amen. amen. So let's read verse 1 down to verse um, 12, and it says, Know ye not, brethren, amen, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which has, which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. Amen. But if the husband is dead, he is loose from the law and her husband. So, if, so then if while her husband lives, she is married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brothers, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is risen from the dead, that you should bring forth fruit unto God. Isn't that exciting? For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now, verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Verse 7, what shall we say then? Is is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not cover. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of conquistness. I'm pronouncing the word wrong. But it means lust for sexual activities. Amen. I looked it up. So, I won't try to pronounce it again. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Amen. For sin, take an occasion by the command to deceive me, and by it it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just, and good. Amen. Amen. 
Romans 1 all the way down to verse 12. You know, there's the old law of doing things, seeing things, amen, that was written in the Old Testament, amen. Our guide, our leadership to teach us what to look forward to, amen, if you wanted to stay out in the world, that is. You are looking forward, you want to be righteous, especially sometimes you go out and you try to witness to someone, saying so. You at home, you understand, you try to witness to your neighbors and everything, and the first thing is, well, I keep the commandments. And you look at them and say, yeah, right, you keep the commands, uh, commandments, all right. You already think it evil. Jesus says, when a man thinks of a woman, lust after a woman, he do it in his heart. He's already breaking the law. Isn't that amazing? We already do it. If you have covetousness, amen, you want somebody else's property or their car, you say, ooh, I like that car. I sure like to have it. And you find a way to try to take it from them or steal from them. That is stealing. Right away, you start off breaking laws of God. When the children came out of Egypt, amen, one of the things that God did on Mount Sinai, amen, he gave them the Ten Commandments, amen. And then he gave them other laws that they had to take care of and look into. Laws that, that God knew that they would have a struggle with, amen. But that commandment to do the law tripped them. Amen. Because they broke the law just walking out the door and going too far. Too many feet away from their house. Amen. They start a fire. Amen. They already killed that because they wanted to eat and they didn't provide the day before. They already was breaking the law. Amen. Isn't that amazing what happened? Amen. Just those simple things. Amen. And you and I, we started off as little kids, little babies. Breaking the law. We wasn't even aware of it. First thing our children do, amen, is say, you say, share a toy with your sister. And he might say, no, mine. Where did that kid get that from? You tell your baby kid, you say, come on, baby, give daddy a little hug. No. And runs the other way. Take something that they shouldn't take. You say, don't touch those cookies, amen. Therefore, later on after dinner. And what happens? The first thing you do, you look around and they eat and you say, baby, what are you doing? Nothing. Well, you see, we already breaking the law. We just mess up because we got nothing else to do, so to say. The devil comes to deceive you. He's a liar, amen, in Romans 10 and 10. The devil come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And you think that you're holy before you got saved. You think you're so righteous before you got saved, amen. But you wasn't. Now looking back at Romans chapter 7 and verse 1, the first thing we see in parenthesis there, uh, the apostle Paul is speaking to the religious people who came to the meeting. Some of them perhaps were maybe uh, came out of a, some other religion, amen, but then some came out of the Jewish religion, amen. They knew the Torah, just like the Apostle Paul. He really knew the Torah, amen, the first five books of Moses. And he said he lived them, amen. He said he was without sin, that he had been perfect, amen. And how many times you meet people, amen, that is so righteous, and the first thing they want to do is blame you. And you go to church, ah, you think you're so good. No, I'm not thinking that. I'm just doing what God asked me to do, to love you, to be kind, to take care of business like I should. But you know what the devil do? He try to turn things on you. That's an everyday and occurrence, amen. So the first verse says, look here. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. Amen. We are already under the thumb of the devil. Think about that. You dress up, you shower, you look good, amen, and you go out and you want to present yourself well. First thing somebody want to do is remind you of your past. Oh, Lord, you remember that sister when she was out there on the corner? Oh, Lord, that sister used to lie so much. 
and you have changed, you have been delivered, and you have been set free, amen. But people sometimes want to drag you back into the world. Ha! You don't want to be dragged back in the world, do you? Amen. In James 1 and 13, verse 13, it says, Let no man say that when he is tested, I am tested of God. For God cannot be tested with evil, neither he any man. God don't test you with evil things. Amen. How many times you say, well, nobody is watching me. Nobody's going to know it. God, the Holy Spirit is watching you. Jesus is watching you. I'm telling you what, saints of God. When all of us started in church, we were a mess. When we came out of the world, we were a mess. When we tried to be saved and born again, we still was messing up. We wasn't delivered. We wasn't set free at, like we thought, amen. You go and you say, oh, Lord, I'm studying, I'm praying, I'm seeking the Lord. And in the back of your mind, you're saying, oh, man, I need to go see my boyfriend again. Or some guy, I need to see my girl again. We all think, ain't nobody going to know about it. The pastor ain't going to know about it. Nobody's going to know about it. But you, let me tell you something, you're breaking the commandments of God right away. We divorce our husbands, we divorce our wives because we're sick of them. <laughs> no, you're, not, no, you're not sick of yourself. But Paul makes a kind of a analogy here as we goes down a little further because he wants you to see how that, you know, if you're married, you should be faithful to your husband or to your wife. If you're paying attention to what God's word says, amen, you won't go out and do the things that you do. You would always want to fulfill the word of God. You would want to do right. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what you want. You want to do everything right. You try to do something and your wife all of a sudden she looks at you and goes, Patrick, why did you do that? Oh, baby, you know, I'm trying to make it look good for you. And right away she don't like what you got. You go like, what's up with this? I'm doing my best. And then husbands get an attitude. We start breaking the law right away in marriage because we are mad at our wives. Sometimes we become upset at our children because they are not obedient. As I said in the beginning, your own little children will turn around and say, no. And so you take it a step too forward. Amen. Again, you look down here at verse 3. It says, then if her husband liveth, she marry another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no more adulteress, though she be married to another man. Amen. Think about that. A husband and wife is married, going through, doing all right, but all of a sudden you've gone through those problems and then they get divorced for uncaused reasons and then they marry or they're not even divorced. How many times you hear about people that's not divorced, they marry other women and uh, have two or three wives and five or six children. I've worked with people, amen, had two families, amen. One family they were supporting on this side and had kids, and one family they had on this side and supporting had kids. And I used to say, man, you're crazy for doing stuff like that. Which one are you going to marry? Don't even make sense. That was lust working in them. Right. Lust and no caring for the children that he had. He didn't care about that woman. And you try to tell these sisters or brothers, look, you're doing what is wrong. That's, yeah, but I'm more righteous than you, Patrick. You know, you'll find out that more people in heaven, amen, I'll be right there too. Uh, I say, yeah, you're probably right if you get saved and delivered and changed. I'm not ashamed to tell them that. And you shouldn't either, right? You should tell them. Tell them, always tell them the truth. But listen, if the husband of the wife, the husband is still alive here, Paul is making this example, amen, you can't go out and do something else just because you feel like you're right. The church works on feeling sometimes. I've been in churches, amen, under bishops, amen, 
not in the Church of God in Christ, don't get me wrong now. Uh, but I've been in other uh, churches on staff, amen, and, and the bishop get us in the back room, all the elders, and he say, don't preach about this, sin. Don't preach about hell. And I'm going like, oh, I'm in the wrong place here, amen. <laughs> You know, and I, you know, you have pastors and preachers, amen, I've been there, I've been up on the pulpit, I've been there, and I hear the bishop, uh, somebody says, amen, this is my church, took me 18 years to build this church, and if you're not coming here, if you're not under my leadership, I don't want you here, and I was like, oh, God, this is, what, what changes? Lust, money, pride those things because they supposed to be married to the Lord Jesus Christ and yet they're married to something else. That's what's that all about. They are married to filthy lucre. Saints of God, let's read on just a little further. It says, verse 4, Therefore, my brothers, you are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another, given to him who is risen from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God. That's important. We are married to Christ. Saints, we are married to Christ. He's the head of the body. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. He's the head of this church. I know Bishop Mason is the head of this church here. And I know a bishop like Bishop Blake in LA. Amen. Was the head. Amen. And others are heads. Amen. And God have brought, brought in uh, different um, uh, Shepherds, amen, to work on his sheep to take care of his lambs, amen. But our allegiance is always to the word of God. Amen. This is what happened to Jim Jones' followers, amen. They took their eyes off the word of God and put it on a man. And I thank God I've been coming to this church. I'm not... Uh, quickly joining in a church, amen, because I need to sit and watch, amen. That's your job, amen. If you go to a church, you watch for the move of the Holy Spirit. Are they teaching the Bible? You at home. This is what you ought to be doing, looking and praying. Is this the word of God? When you come, amen, finally get away from your TV, watching the TV evangelist, and come and have fellowship in the house of God, you'll feel a lot better. You'll feel a lot better because you can man, man can have fellowship with another man here. I believe this brother over here can help me when he see me slipping off. But nobody can help you at home because you're relying upon yourself. You are an adulteress because now you're looking at another religion or something else that may feel good. You at home, why aren't you here? If you're sick and you're hurting, I can understand why you're not here. I can understand that you're not in the house of God. Amen. But let me tell you something. You need fellowship. Sisters need to come to church because you have another sister here that can help you. Amen. And then you don't be a, 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 a woman that Paul talks about, a busybody. You don't have to satisfy your, uh, your neighbors. You want to make your pleasure with the God of the universe. Hallelujah. Verse 6 of Romans chapter 7. Amen. Verse 6 says something very important. And this is the base we're going on today. Amen. Verse 6 says, But now we are delivered from the law. Wow. You are delivered from the law. Amen. That being dead wherein you were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the, in the oldness of the letter. You know what? Um, I remember when I first got saved, amen, over 40 years ago, and, and uh, I started going to church, amen, I started looking around. You know how you do? Am I at the right place? You know, I had visited the Jehovah Witnesses. I had uh, been down to the temple with the Nation of Islam, going there for a while, and I'm a little tired and sitting and going. I done some of those things, amen. I, I, 
I, I stayed away because I was really looking for something that meant something, amen. I even visited some churches. I don't know about all of you. Some of you might have been saved all your life. <laughs> some of you know all the good stuff, amen. But I was a wretch undone. You know, you'd think I'm a nice looking guy, a nice guy now with a little suit and tie on. I was the devil handyman. Come on. I know some of y'all was. Amen. I know you. And I, I just want to let you say, I let you know, amen. If it was out there, uh, I did it. Amen. If, if the door was open for me, I went there. Amen. I wasn't afraid of death. Death was just another place we we're going to go and meet your friends in hell. Oh, yeah, I'm going to drive the coal train. I'm, I'm going to carry the water. You know, you hear all these stupid things? Well, that was me. I'm going to tell you one more thing, too, because in that before I became really, truly an understandable of the word of God, amen, I had ideas that I thought I could contribute to that church I was going to. How many people come to church thinking because you're in business or you're doing certain things that you're not really serving the Lord? You come in there because you think this is a good meeting place. You can just meet people. You can be somebody. Yeah, I go to Los Angeles. <laughs> I go to Fred Price Church, you know? Yeah, yeah, I do those things. Oh, you got a beer? Yeah, I'm cool with that. You know, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with drinking a little bit. Nobody is. How many times you run into people doing stupid things like that? They said they gotten saved, amen, and you hear them saying, well, I'm going to West Angeles, you know, Bishop Blake, that's my pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cuss you out in a heartbeat. And I said, I needed a change. I was raised up in the Baptist church, don't get me wrong now, and my mother was real strict. I didn't get drunk until I was in the military. You know, I, I couldn't get, I couldn't drink at home, and I couldn't smoke at my mama's house. Amen. Cause mom had the, the right hand of righteousness. You know, the old backhand that the kids don't get anymore these days. Amen. Yeah, your mother. Amen. When when you got up of age, some of you boys know what I'm talking about. Men, excuse me, know what I'm talking about. Amen. You get, you could run after you got up at a certain age, right? Amen. But when you run, you come back and you're taking a bath. She then, that's when she come in with the switch and the belt, the electric cars, and then she whoops some butt. <laughs> you folks at home know what I'm talking about. God is not willing and want to just beat you up like that, amen. He's willing to deal with us, amen. He's willing to work with us, amen. He's a God of grace, amen. It's not under the law that if you break the law, you owe the law and you don't have a chance to go into heaven, amen. It's not like belongs in, belonging to the Islamic religion and not even sure you're going to go to heaven. Even Allah wasn't even sure he was going to heaven. Now, I'm not like the witnesses, amen, that's knocking on my door, amen, who we'll think they're going to wait till they get to judgment and plead their their case because they do great things of witnessing. But we have something better. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came and died for us. Freed us. Amen. Verse 6. Amen. We have been delivered from the law. We don't even act like it. People don't even like to act like it sometimes because they're not paying attention. Sometimes, amen, I, I just let me throw this out there, even for you people at home. You go and you're witnessing, you're talking to somebody who belongs to the organization who's been knocking on your door. Either they came on two bicycles or they brought their families to your door. I'm real good. I don't let them in because the Bible tells you not to let them in, amen, and not to give them God's blessing. But I go ahead and tell them, you know, I come outside and I'll sit outside. Actually, at my house, I put a bench out under the tree and everything so that we can go out there. And <laughs> I was just doing what the Bible said. Don't, don't, don't invite them in your home, right? So we'd go out there and I would talk to them because I wanted to see them get saved. And I would say, what, why is it important for me just knowing the name of God? Do that gives me salvation or not? If I know his name is Jehovah, I say, what, what do I get out of this? And then they want to tell me other stuff. They never tell you how to have eternal life. And then the ones on the bicycles tell you about, oh, I had a burning in my heart. 
I say, is that the Holy Spirit? Well, yeah, I had a burning in my heart. Do you believe that Moray was right? Yes, I believe it. You believe you're going to be resurrected again and tried again? Your women can only get into heaven if they get permission from their husbands? And I said, I don't understand why women would want to be a Mormon. I just don't get it. If your husband don't like you, you can't even get into heaven. What's up with that? Amen. So they got all kind of natural laws to keep people from going to heaven. Amen. Some of the things they got not even acquainted to what the Bible said. They're making up stuff. But Jesus came that you may get have life and may have it in an abundance. Amen. You cannot keep all those laws God gave, all those 300 and some laws. Every time you mess up, you trip, you done broke the law. You need Jesus, who John saw coming at a distance down to be baptized. You know what John the Baptist said? Behold, the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. My trust is in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your trust is... Is is in Jesus, amen. The blood of Jesus, that lamb's blood, amen, to purify you and cleanse you, amen, from all unrighteousness, amen. That's what you need. God is so good and so powerful, amen, that it's make it almost unbelievable that he loves us so much. It makes it almost unbelievable that he would let us do what we do, amen, and still love us. Well, you know what I do every time I'm talking to someone, special new babes in Christ, I tell them, you know what? You have a little son there, don't you? Yeah, you love that baby? And they'll say, yeah. I say, you know, when you get them all dressed and all washed up and you put on little clean clothes for them, amen, and you tell them to sit right here on the porch or whatever, hey, while you go back in and put your makeup on and get all dressed, right? Yeah. And I say, if that kid go out there and play in the mud and get all dirty, do you get so mad at him you throw him away? They said, no. I said, what do you do? Well, I just clean them off and, and go to church. I said, well, that's the way God do us. But you've got to remember, amen. He loves you even more than you, you love your children. He loves you more than his own name. Wow. He loves you, amen. And he gives you a way out, amen. But you know what? I was, I was looking at this one thing over here. Let me read it. Amen. Uh, what Paul was saying, amen, uh, in, in reading, amen, and, and I, I keep this thought in my mind. Let me, let me find what I'm talking about. Amen. I, I got the note right here. Because Paul was thinking about it as he was writing it, 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 this epistle, amen, and, and as he was talking and thinking, amen, he realized that he was a mess. Amen. I'm going to find this second and I love reading the Bible because the Bible is always exciting, saints, amen. I, n I never get a, enough of the, of the Bible, amen. It says, Paul said in verse 18, he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is pr present with me, and how to perform that which is good, I find not. I see Paul, Paul is wrestling here for a moment. Now, now, I, I just don't believe you saints of God in this congregation right now in this, in this, in this room don't have a moment where you're wrestling with God where you said, oh Lord, I'm messing up. I can't get it right. I just can't get it right. I mean, is it just me? You know, it's just me. Oh, all right, I got one brother. I got two now. Yeah, you know, you, you said, I can't get it right. But listen what it says. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. What is with that? Amen. I tell you what, when they cut you off on the freeway, one time I was at work, amen, and I was sat at the bus stop. I was evaluating some stuff, and a puddle of water was there, and this guy came by, and the truck came over from the other lane. I looked, and man, he splashed that water on me. I ran and jumped in the company car, and I followed him down the street. I was ticked. I was going back to the old days. <laughs> I followed him. God is my witness. I followed him. He went up on the freeway. I went up on the freeway too. Amen. Yeah, I did. Because I was going to get, you know, amen. I was going to make my point. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit had to remind me 
What are you doing? And I had to back off. I backed off, amen, God is my witness, I backed off. I got off the freeway, I went in and reported myself. Because I know somebody must have saw me and probably called in. I'm in the company car. I'm trying to cut the truck off. I'm slowing down in front of him, amen, trying to make him stop on the freeway. I lost it. I went back to the old days. So this is what the Bible said. Now, if I do that what I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my memory, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. Yeah, I like fighting in the days, amen. And I wanted to get even with that guy. He ain't the only one I ever got upset. I had to get saved and delivered again. Now, you know, God had delivered me, amen. And verse 24 says, it says in verse 25, and I'll close, stop that. Oh, wicked man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. This is why I think about these verses all the time. I thank God. Amen. I thank God. Amen. What I thank him for. Amen. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh the law of sin. Because you have to get this straight up here. And how do we get that straight, amen? In all in order to fulfill Romans chapter 7, amen? We do it by going before the throne of God, amen? All what Romans speak about, that's the only way you can serve God, amen? You have to go before his throne. You come in, amen, with boldness, he tell you. You can come in and find grace and mercy in the times of your knees, amen? Now, if you say that you have not sinned in Romans, in John, 1 John 1 and 8, it says, but if you say that you have not sinned, you deceive yourself, amen. But verse 9 lets you know that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then verse 10 of that same chapter, amen, says, what? If you say that you have not sinned, you make him a liar. How dare you try to make God a liar? When you know you mess up every day. That's why we go to the throne every day. 5.15 in the morning, amen. You on the prayer line, amen. You come on singing and praising, and amen. I hear you, amen, amen. And then at 6 o'clock, I go to our prayer line, amen, where I, uh, uh, friendship, amen, and keep right on in prayer. But I like to pray all day. Anytime I think about certain things, I need to keep clean. How often do you want to stay clean? I don't know. Be clean. The rapture may happen any time. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, amen. It may happen in a moment and a twinkling in the eye. It may happen. So the best thing for me, amen, is to stay clean. Not to be wrestling under the law of sin. Not to be wrestling with that, but to be walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, amen. That's what we have to do, amen. You do those things to stay alive in this life and the life to come. When I was dying with cancer, amen, and, and down to a little skin and bones, amen, I wasn't worrying. People at the church say, well, how you feel, Elder Gunn? I said, I'm great. Don't be worrying about me. Amen. You see me now, amen, I'm smiling. If you see me in the casket, I'm smiling. Why? Because I'm home with my Father, which is in heaven. That's the confidence, that's the faith that, faith that you sh should have. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So you have that faith all the time. You walk under the anointing of that faith, amen. I like this church, thank God, amen. Because you're praying, your pastor's praying, 
praying. I see folks in here praying. I see people in here that are serious. I see people out in here in love. Amen. I see good things at this church. You at home. Amen. That only watches on this video. Amen. Come on down to the church. Amen. Come on in, amen, and have fellowship, especially since you see the day of evil is approaching. You see Jesus soon to come. Come on down, amen, and let somebody love you. Let somebody pray for you, amen. Let the pastor, amen, embrace you, amen. He ain't afraid to embrace you and hug you, amen, and say welcome to the church. Thank God for that. All the sisters in here, sisters, they'll be good to you. It doesn't matter whether you're white, black, green, or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're poor or rich. It doesn't matter if you're driving a nice car or a raggedy car. Come on in. Come on in the water while you can. Step in now, amen, so God can bless you, amen. But if you don't know Jesus, amen, now is the time that you can find out who he is. If you don't know Jesus, it's so simple. It's A, B, and C. They make it real simple, amen. Amen. You accept Jesus Christ. You can accept the words. Amen. You can accept what he's done. Amen. You accept that he is a, a Jehovah Jireh. You accept. Amen. He is the anointed one that was called. That he arrived in time. Amen. He didn't come after the, uh, the prophecies. He came during the prophecies. He fulfilled Isaiah chapter 61. He fulfilled uh, Zechariah 99. He came riding in on that donkey on that day of the jubilee. Amen. He came right in on time. Amen. If you accept it, amen, and you believe it, that's the best part about it. Because what he did on the cross, amen, he took all of your sins, amen. He took everything to the cross for you. If you want Jesus, it's easy, amen. It's A, B, and C, amen. You come here, you believe that he was rose from the dead, amen. He fulfilled something good for you. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. Amen. He took away all of your iniquities. He took away all your transgressions. Amen. He took the government up on your shoulders for you. That you don't have to worry about what Trump might do or what Biden might do. Amen. But you know that Jesus is taking care of that. And of all of that, amen, through that salvation, he took stripes upon your back that you can be healed. I'm telling you, that's how I was healed from cancer. That was eating me up. Amen. I lost my voice. I lost all my weight, amen. I was weak, amen. My wife had to carry me to the bathroom, had to carry me places, had to prop me up to take me to the doctor, amen. But I believe what he said, amen. If you believe it, he can raise it up. And then and see if you, all you got to do is confess that you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Confess, amen. He's waiting and willing to take you into his arms. What a good God we serve. Jesus will will not turn you away and he's not going to make you do the law for he has fulfilled the law for you. Come on in while the water is moving. Come on in while there's room at the cross. Come on in. Don't worry about the law. He's already took care of everything for you. You can be washed in his blood. You can be cleansed by his word. Amen. You are renewed every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. 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 Let's give God praise. Amen. I want to thank God. It's my first time on the video. I'm not sure it's over quite yet. Amen. <laughs> but thank God for you. Amen. Please, if you have any questions, Amen. The church, amen, is right here in Temecula, amen. It's 34590 Celia Azuna. Amen. Thank you. Azania, amen. Right here in Temecula, amen. I'll get it right. <laughs> just, just work with me here, saints, amen. Eventually we get it right. We thank God for the pastor, amen. We thank God, amen. Thank God for all of you together. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.